Hey, I'm Chris Peterson. Welcome to Checkup Prep, your informational video series based on your child's well visit. Probably not a conversation we should be having here at the library. So let's do this. You watch the disclaimer clip, I'll meet you back at the office. Perfect. See you there. While I am a board certified pediatrician licensed to practice medicine in the state of New Hampshire, this video is meant to be informational only, not an attempt to practice medicine, nor to be diagnostic. It is meant to be used in conjunction with your child's well care visits. Hey, welcome to your nine month checkup prep visit. Let's start off talking about foods. Nine months of age, if you're nursing, we'd expect you to be nursing three to five times a day. Still give your baby the vitamin D supplements. It's gonna be important for bone health uh, later in life. Formula fed babies, somewhere between 24 and 32 ounces a day. And for both formula and uh, breastfed babies, we're looking for still a half a cup of infant cereal divided through uh, the day. Stage three foods, soft finger foods, uh, things that maybe you're eating uh, at dinner time, sweet potatoes or carrots or peas, things you can mash up with your own fork and give to the baby would be okay. Risk of choking is still there, so making sure we're watching your baby. Baby should be able to use its fingers to eat, so the puffs and the meltaways and those kinds of things, they'll pick them up and get them into their own mouth, but again, risk of choking is there. Infant cereal is still going to be important. I know that you're giving more and more foods, but that infant cereal is where your baby is going to get its iron. Breast milk is loaded with iron, formula is loaded with iron, but not enough iron for your baby. Iron is important not only for anemia, but also is related to intellect. So making sure we're getting your baby that infant cereal twice a day, quarter of a cup for a whole half a cup a day is going to be important for their health and nutrition. As you're giving more and more of the solid foods, foods to avoid, we don't want your baby to get milk, drinkable milk, yogurt would be okay. Uh, we don't want your baby to get honey. Both of those go away at 12 months of age. So 12 months of age, they can have milk and honey, but not at nine months of age. So avoiding milk and honey, nine months of age. And then two risks that, are, uh, that continue even on after this would be big fish and uh, things that they can choke on. So pistachio nuts or you know, things that are hard that will go down and choke. Big fish, shark, tuna, swordfish, those kinds of things are things I would stay away from. Regular fish, absolutely okay. Scrambled eggs, absolutely okay. Um, strawberries or, or like I said other, other seafood, all okay. Not that I would give your nine month old peanut butter, that would be a tongue, uh, tongue uh, to the top of the mouth type of effect, but it is okay if they got into a little bit of peanut butter from a sibling or something like that. So these days we're not food restricting kids other than those risks, the milk, the honey, the big fish, um, and things that they can potentially choke on. Development. Let's talk about that. Nine months, man, they're everywhere, but a lot of fun too. So verbally, now they're saying things in big syllable words. Ma, 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 da, 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 ba, 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 ba. For all you mothers out there, unfortunately, 85% of babies will say da, da first. They love you. They'll get to you but 85% will say da-da first. I guess the other way of looking at that is if you got a 15% baby that's saying mama, good for you. A gross motor, kids should be crawling or scooting or creeping uh, to get themselves around. They should be able to sit well, not fall over, be able to reach out, grab a toy, and not tumble over. Um, so really good core strength uh, as well. They should be poking things with a finger they should be able to rake foods in, again, pick foods up and get them into their mouth. Not quite fine pincer grass, that's 12 months of age, but being able to get foods, twist that wrist around, uh, get the foods into their mouth. They should be clapping and banging in the midline, uh, all exciting stuff. Responding to their name now, so like you call their name, they should be responding to that. And they should, they should have something called object permanence. Object permanence is um, if I have something and I'm holding it in front of me and I put it behind me, you'd say, Chris, it's behind your back. Now, at four months of age, a baby just doesn't know it's there. But at nine months of age, they're starting to go like, wait a second, where is that? Where did you put that? And so that object permanence is something that they gain a hold of as well. So th again, peekaboo and those kinds of things are fun games to play with because now they get the fact you're underneath the blanket um, and I can find you. So good games to play with your baby. Let's switch gears a little bit, get over to safety. Your home environment, let's predict that mobility. Baby's gonna be getting everywhere, 
crawling over to the couch, pulling itself up, reaching onto the coffee table. So the put it up higher game is slowly coming to an end. That's not going to work for much longer. Let's think about outlets and cords, window guards or opening your windows from the top, finding cabinets that need to be locked up so that they can't get to poisons, medicines, matches, weapons, make sure those are all nice and secure, making sure gates are at the bottoms and tops of stairs so that they can't tumble down, limiting the access to bathrooms and to water, uh, making sure that all of the little things that are around the house, plastic bags even, things they can get into their mouths, are all non-accessible. No walkers. Walkers increase the baby's mo mobility, are just a risk for going down a set of stairs or getting to something that they normally wouldn't be able to get to. Exosaucers are those kind of stationary playing things are okay. Johnny jump ups are okay. Those kind of bouncy chairs, not gonna hurt their hips. Um, those are all gonna be fun things for your baby as well and are nice and safe. Make sure your water temperature is still nice and low. I want you to have a hot shower, but I don't want your baby to get scalded. So less than 120, 125 degrees. Smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, making sure those are working, keeping our home environment nice and safe. Avoiding secondhand smoke. If you're smoking, please quit for your own health and the health of your baby. Um, avoiding sun exposure, but sunscreen is okay at this point. Again, we don't want to slather up and go off to the beach, but if you're going to be out in the sun and your baby's going to be uh, uh, exposed to some sun, then sunscreen is okay. But using um, uh, blankets that go over them or a hat that goes over them to try to prevent that sun exposure is important. Bug spray is also okay, but again, we want to try to avoid bug spray. If your baby is out and crawling around and in your area there are ticks, make sure you're doing tick checks. From a tick check standpoint, if you're checking your body and your body, baby's body twice a day, you eliminate the risk of Lyme almost 100%. That takes that tick being on for about 24 to 36 hours to give you Lyme. So if we do tick checks, we totally almost eliminate that risk for you. Poison control. I hope your baby doesn't get into anything, but if you're worried that it has ingested something that you are concerned about, then give poison control a number. It's a nationalized system now. 1-800-222-1222. 1-800-222-1222. You need it, give them a call. Final thing is that car seat, still in the rear facing car seat, five point restraint, back seat being the safest space. We're gonna be there until the age of two. So keep your child safe by keeping it in an appropriate car seat. Sleeping safety, we still want your baby on its back to sleep. I know it's rolling all over the place. But, and you don't need to be the human spatula and flip it back over, but you definitely want to put your baby down on its back. If it rolls over, typically this age, they roll over, they push their face down into that mattress, bum up in the air, doesn't look comfortable, but that's the way they like to sleep. You don't need to be the human spatula and flip them back over. Still keep that sleep space nice and clean, approved mattress, no blankets, no pillows, no bumpers, um, and keeping smoke free will keep the SIDS risk as low as we can. Let's talk about activities your baby's gonna like. Model talking with your baby. So talk with them, let them hopefully imitate some of the sounds that you're making, pay attention to those sounds that they're making to you. Sing with them, play music, read with them. Again, with that object permanence, peekaboo plays a, yeah, comes to play a whole new realm in their life. Getting underneath a blanket, they'll go nuts, laughing and, and uh, trying to pull the blanket up to find you. A lot of fun. Allow them to explore stuff safely. Don't get me wrong. We don't want them just wandering off into a cave or something to explore, but let them get uh, uh, used to exploring things with their hands, smelling things, tasting things. Again, risk of choking. We want to make sure that's mitigated, but allowing your baby to explore, showing them affection, giving them kisses, cuddling them, snuggling them up, being excited for them when they do things well, clapping your hands and really uh, showing them that you think they're great. Limit the amount of electronics, TV, videos, phones, and in fact, limit that for you too. If your baby's around, put that phone down. Pay attention to it. It's soon enough it won't be wanting to pay attention to you. So take a time when you can to interact with your baby, putting that stuff aside the best that you can. Also, making sure you do take time for yourself. Pay attention to your baby, but make sure you're paying attention to your needs and the needs of your spouse as well. Keeping sleep is an important piece for your baby will hopefully keep sleep an important piece for you as well. Well-slept uh, parents make better parents. You have that resource in order to be a good, active uh, parent in your baby's life. 
keep that calm, balanced face, and making sure we're modeling well, thinking about how do I use words? Am I polite? How do I drive? How do I interact with others? How do I resolve anger? How do I deal with frustration? How do I resolve conflict? These are all things your baby is watching you do. And so if you do them well, they'll do them well as well. I don't expect you to be perfect. None of us are. But if we're trying as hard as we can to show ourselves as good people, your baby will be a good person just because that's what they've always seen. You are the coolest person in your baby's life. And you will be right up until they're 9 or 10, and then you become the biggest loser. So enjoy your time as, your best, as the best person in your baby's life, and enjoy your baby. Stay balanced. Stay centered. Have fun. We'll see you later.